Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So this is going to be a special episode. I know you've seen me on the Truth We Hide podcast, but we're doing a twofer today. We're going to do a recording for both the podcast, but also for our new venture, the Veteran Lifestyle Magazine. So this is a big deal for me today. We have Mr. Sean Kanan on. And if you don't know him, I don't know why you don't know him. You need to go Google him. So you'll you'll be like, oh my gosh, I know exactly who he is. And so there's no question about it, but it's very special for me. And I've been, I've been really nervous to be honest. I've been nervous to do this today, but I'm really excited and so honored. I have a bunch of questions for him, but I can't wait for you to listen. If you guys are listening on the podcast, but also read this article, it'll be transcribed into an article for the veteran lifestyle magazine. So please follow along. And I will also at the end, I will be showing his handle so you can go follow him everywhere that he's at. So let's bring him on. Hi, how are you, Annette? Hi, how are you? Good. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. You too. I'm super excited about this. And like I said, I'm just, I'm just nervous. I know you're just a normal human. You're just a normal human being. But when I, (laughs) but when I read your bio, it's like bringing back so many memories, so many memories. It's ridiculous. I'm like picturing it all. And I'm thinking, holy crap. Holy crap. So I, so I'm going to go into this really quick. I mean, it, it, I can be here forever to talk about you because you've done so many amazing things over your lifespan, but I wanted to remind everybody, Mr. Sean Kanan, and I'm sorry, I'm a military background. I'm so used to calling people, sir, or ma'am, no matter what age you are, like we could be the same age, but I'll probably just still okay. find you. Sir. <laughs> Please call me Sean. I will call you Sean. Thank you. So you guys, do you remember Cobra Kai? Do you remember the Karate Kid Part 3? The Bold and the Beautiful, the Young and the Restless, General Hospital. Uh, he also won, got, no, he, he also has two other films with Bruce Willis. In 21, he won the Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Limited Series. But I just read on the 8th of March that you were also named Performer of the Week by Daily Drama TV. I was. I, I that was, is. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty unexpected. <laughs> Holy stinking amazing. Because, as you know, I follow you on Twitter yeah. and Facebook. And, I mean, I, we, I just, I, I think it's amazing. So, like I said, it just brought back so many memories. But let's let's get into it because i know it's it's seven it's about seven o'clock your time in california right yeah it's a little after seven it is okay (laughs) so can you tell me quick just let's just start with this can you tell me about your journey into hollywood starting with your role as mike barnes and cobra and the karate kid how did you feel how did it feel to reprise that role after so many years um okay that's about seven questions in one (laughs) Oh, sorry, sorry. I was. <laughs> Let's start from the first one. Well, all right, let, me see if I, let me see if I can encapsulate an answer into all of that. I came to uh, Hollywood um, May 28th, 1987. Um, I came from, uh, I was going to school at, in Boston University. I was studying political science, transferred out to UCLA, finished that, uh, graduated there, and uh, started knocking on doors. And I uh, got a few small jobs. And then I found out about the open call for Karate Kid 3, which I went to. And ultimately, I, I won the part. There were, there were probably 2,000 people there at the open call. And I think they probably saw 10,000 people uh, for the entire casting process. And, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that bought a ticket at the movie theater to see the Karate Kid and the Karate Kid 2. And there I am in Karate Kid 3 facing off against uh, Daniel LaRusso. That's nuts. Yeah, it is nuts. <laughs> it is crazy. How, how did you compose yourself when you were face to face with him? You know, I, I've always been really driven. And uh, I, I knew if there was even a hint of um, reacting like, oh, my God, this is Ralph Macchio. I've seen him in The Outsiders. I've seen him in The Karate Kid. I mean, I, there was no way to get the part. I mean, I needed to be Mike Barnes. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I like to think I'm a pretty nice guy and, but you know, for, for the, for the audition and for the role, I definitely needed to access a very different part of 
my personality. That's very interesting. And, and I, and I agree. You can't, you can't be, well, for me, you can't be fangirling, right? You have to like put your game face on and you have to go for the part. <laughs> when I was, I was, I don't remember how old I was. I was very young and I wanted to be in the active scene and my mom took me to classes and I, I actually auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club way back when, when I lived in Simi Valley. So I, um, yeah, I just, I, I didn't get the part, but gosh, what, what an experience to be filled with so many motivated kids back then. Yeah, so the, the kids, <laughs> kids are amazing that work in Hollywood and come from other parts of the country to pursue a career. I mean, they're like, you know, professionals at the age of like 10, 10 years old. And, uh, you know, they're dead serious about it. And so the competition is very stiff at a very young age. It's crazy. Even now seeing all these actors is like, oh my gosh, you are amazing. I can't even imagine. You know, it's, it's a strange job. It really is. Um, I was talking to somebody about it today who works in enforcement. And I said, you know, in a lot of ways, I think what I do for a living is an approximation of what you do. It's, it's a lot of, boredom and normalcy punctuated by moments of extreme excitement. Um, you know, and I was saying, listen, you know, he said, what are you doing tonight? He said, what am I doing tonight? I've got seven shows I'm doing this week. I'm going home and learning lines. I said, you know, if, if you think I'm out there uh, going to some wild party in the Hollywood Hills, you know, <laughs> you, you have it wrong. I mean, you know, it, it requires a lot of dedication and, and work. And, but, but you know what? I, I never feel like I'm working. I, I love what I do, whether I'm writing my books or I'm coaching or I'm speaking or I'm filming. Um, I, I feel really blessed to have the opportunity to make a living doing what I love, which is to inspire people. That's a beautiful thing. And I'm so, I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think that's one of the most important things to do to have right now is to be able to have that love for what you do. And yeah. if it's not fun anymore, then don't do it. But if it's, yeah. if it's still fun, put everything you got into it. And that's why you aspire people. I love that so much. I love that. Now talking about your book. So I didn't get a chance to read it. I, I am sorry because I just asked you to be on here like a few that's days right. ago, but <laughs> can you talk to us about um, Kumai? I, and, and I wanted to ask you about, it, it seems to draw on pers some personal experiences, but can you tell me what the inspiration behind that was? Sure. Well, you're, you're, you're referring to Welcome to the Kumite, which oh, is- I'm sorry. Oh, my okay. Kumite. Oh, so welcome, you're right. So welcome, so welcome to the Kumite is the sequel to Way of the Cobra. Uh, okay. Way of the Cobra is a personal development book. Cobra is an acronym for the words character, optimization, balance, respect, and abundance, Cobra. And I'm the sensei and you're my dojo. Um, and these are the philosophies and the strategies that I have used to overcome some significant challenges in my life and to uh, achieve some of my success. And uh, Welcome to the Kumite is the sequel. And the tagline for Welcome to the Kumite is conquer your greatest opponent, which of course is you. And the Kumite refers to an epic battle. So how do you defeat your greatest opponent who knows everything about you uh, knows your deepest thoughts. Well, you have to extinguish the person that you were yesterday and be metaphorically reborn every day as a kinder, wiser, smarter version of who you were the day before. And it's a constant and never ending cycle. God, that's, that's powerful. Good. Go read the books in that. I know I'm going to <laughs> No, you know, I got five kids. Go read the books. <laughs> I, no, I am for real because I, 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 in this entrepreneurship world that I have found myself in after I retired from the army, I suffered By from, the way, thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. So thank you very much. I suffer from imposter syndrome and, mm, get, interesting. and getting in my head about, mm -hmm. well, I'm not good enough. I'm going right? to fix, fix you right now. You ready? Yes. Okay. First of all, Everybody thinks they're a fraud at one point or another. Okay, that's yes. the first. It's it's bullshit. And the second thing is that the reason that you're in your head is because you you're anxious, and anxiousness comes from not living in the present, from projecting into the future of what may happen. 
and you create drama between your ears based upon what you think may happen or may never happen. And if you stay rooted in the present, if you, if you accept that we live in a world of abundance, there's enough love and success and money for everybody. Um, you know, somebody else getting theirs does not keep you from getting yours. And if you, if you keep that positive vibration of living not in scarcity, but in abundance, you put that vibration out into the world. And the law of vibration says that like matches like. So if you walk around all the time saying, God, I just, you know, I never, I want more money, but I'm always broke. I can't pay the rent. That all, all the universe hears is, oh, you are living in scarcity. So you want more of it. And it gives you the very thing that you don't want. And when you put out that you live in abundance, I can tell you from personal experience, the heavens open and things come to you in ways that you can never imagine. And I've seen it in my own life and I believe it with every fiber of my being. And, you know, um, um, everything vibrates at the subatomic level, even a rock, right? And emotions and words and thoughts all have a vibration too. And the lowest vibrations are things like envy, jealousy, hate, and anger. And the highest ones are love, compassion, um, you know, caring and kindness. And when you vibrate at a high level, you, atta you attract different people into your life. You attract different opportunities. Um, and, you know, you start to exist in a flow state where it's kind of like you're, you know, it's like um, Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. You're just like, whoosh, whoosh, you know, just <laughs> sidestepping things. And that doesn't mean that you don't have really challenging days where crappy stuff happens. But if you are meaningfully happy on the inside, um, you can be happy while still experiencing things that are uncomfortable, you know, having a difficult day, but it doesn't throw you off the center of your game because you're not attaching your happiness to external things. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And you're actually, it, it, that's spot on because I, so I, I have PTSD and depression, anxiety, all the fun stuff that you get when you get out of the army. I have decided that I'm not going to suffer from it anymore. I'm living with it. Yeah. And this is how I'm going to do it. And then you're I, a, I, you're not a victim. Right, right. So I'm teaching my kids that you can have a bad day, but how are you going to deal with oh. that? And so I think it's as I, as I get older and I, my book, my give a shit factor is like, and I don't care what people think anymore. It does. It changes everything. I surround myself by positive people. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, at least in my life, I, I found that when I stopped chasing things, mm. um, things started coming to me, but they didn't have the same meaning that I thought they would. You know what I mean? I, I, I like nice things the same as everyone else. Mm -hmm. But when you start pursuing things like, how can I make a difference in this world? How can I have more influence? How can I be of service? I've always believed the fastest way to get what you want in life is to help other people get what they want and mm -hmm. doing it without, um, you know, any kind of um, subterfuge or, or personal agenda, just because it's the right thing to do. And I have found in my life time and time again, um, when I do that, the things that come to me now, as opposed to the things I chased earlier in my life, um, you know, my life barely resembles my old life and um you know I, I, I think i think when you start refining things that cannot be taken away from you like your character hmm. like like your your integrity like who you are as a person um the external things that can always be taken away from you um they they lose a lot of their shine you're so right it's true and i think I think some of it has to do with age too, because oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Years ago, it would have been so different, but now, now that I'm almost fifty, I'm like, not the same, not the same at all. So it's well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, you know, you've heard the expression "people change." I don't believe people change. I believe if you're successful in life, you evolve. You always oh, were yeah. that person. You're not changing into someone else. You know, in life, we take on armor to protect us from the fact that life can be difficult sometimes. It can be cruel. People can be cruel. Criticism, bullying, all that stuff. And so we learn to defend ourselves by creating armor. But the more you can strip that away 
and get in touch with your own vulnerability and um, allow your authentic self to emerge, the more powerful you become. You don't need the armor anymore. Because instead of having armor, you've got, a, you've got an aura, you've got a glow. That was fantastic. I love that so much because I, I, in the work that I do with, when it comes to mental health, I'm always talking to people and preaching about how to just be authentically you. It's, you don't need to be Instagram pretty anymore. Like just be you. That's what people want to see is a real you, the real life. And it's just, I love that you said all that. Wow. It's incredible. What would you, what advice would you give to aspiring artists looking to break into this industry? Because you are an actor, an author, a comedian. Like you do all these things. Yep. So, I'm what also, advice would you give? Also, an act. I'm, a, I'm an acting teacher, and um, okay, I work, with, I work with actors all the time. Um, I'd say that you need to become as self-aware as possible before you try to slip into the skin of another character. You need to have a very good understanding of who you are. Okay, so that you can have access to the internal database of your emotions and know how to use them when necessary. Okay, I always tell people, you know what the secret to being an interesting actor is? It's being an interesting human being. And how do you become an interesting human being? By being an interested human being, by being curious, by learning new things all the time. Uh, I tell actors, you know, read, travel, study a foreign language, study martial arts, watch history documentaries, you know, be a sponge, you know, constantly be learning and, and working on yourself, understanding human psychology, understanding what motivates uh, human beings. And, um, you know, if you're studying acting in conjunction with sort of deconstructing yourself, then you're very much on the right path. Is I, guess that I guess ultimately that boils down to one piece of advice, which is know that you're enough. You don't need to become someone else to become an interesting actor. You need to become the best version of yourself. And that will be fascinating. Wow. So is that how you were able to put yourself in all the, I mean, you played so many different roles over the years. How difficult was it to do that? Or were, did you, or were, was it kind of not easy, but were you able to resonate with that character at the time? Yeah, um, you know, my career has been a long journey and my success has mirrored my success in evolving as a person. Hmm. Um, you know, I am, I am 50 times the actor that I was five years ago, you know, when I quit drinking and uh, really started doing a lot of this work on myself. Um, you know, it's, it's just like night and day, um, because I was playing at things a lot. And once I knew who I was, I could embody it and play in it instead of my approximation of what that is. I know that sounds a little esoteric, but, um, you know, I also learned not to chase. I mean, I don't, I don't chase the business. Um, now I'm very fortunate. I work on a couple of different shows and, but, but my point is I'm not involved in the swirl of if I don't get this job, then I'm not happy. If, you know, as an actor, you must learn to be a meaningfully happy person in your life when you are not working as an actor, because if the only time that you're going to be meaningfully happy is when you're on a soundstage, you are going to be unhappy a spectacular amount of the time. And one of the things that really helped me with that was not looking at things as failures. I mean, I probably work more than 95% of most actors, and I also don't get the role 95% of the time. And if I looked at every time I didn't get the role as a failure, I wouldn't be able to step foot in another casting office. Um, you know, I look at it as a teacher. Maybe I got a chance to read for a casting director who didn't know who I was. Maybe I got a chance to prepare for a role that's sort of outside of my wheelhouse. Maybe I was meant to be free in my schedule for something else. So you have to attach a positive, empowering story to yeah. every event in your life so that it doesn't become disempowering. And I've found also that if you want results, stay out of them. You know, concern yourself more with constructing a bulletproof process. Um, we, we create processes 
for everything in our life in which we're successful. As an example, you know, you and I don't know each other well, but I, I bet we drive a car 99.8% the exact same way. You unlock the car, you get in, you put the seatbelt on, you put something in the nav, you check the mirrors, throw it in reverse, check the mirrors, throw it in drive, obey the street signs, obey the speed limit, and you expect to get to your destination, right? You don't sit there and drive like this going, oh my God, am I going to make it? Because you've built a bulletproof process for mm. driving a car. And with the exception of something statistically unlikely, and as long as you apply it consistently and effectively, meaning you're not drinking and driving, you're not texting, um, you've got an extremely good chance of achieving your results. So I teach my clients to stay out of the results and concentrate on refining the process. And I imagine, even though I never served in the military, that there's a lot of things that you do in the military that through repetition of a tried and true process eventually leads to successful results. Whether it's on the shooting range, whether it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, whether it's you know learning something complex that has to do with communications or something like that. I mean, in the beginning, it all seems difficult. Everything is difficult in the build, the beginning. But if you apply a process that works, the results will come. That is so fascinating. And no, your explanation sounded like a military procedure. <laughs> I was like, that's that's exactly how it is. And, and, I, and you're so right, though, because a lot of us, I think we live in fear. So when we we're driving the car, we're like, oh, my gosh, you know, so we have to think about just just Trust go through the process. process. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. I love that. Oh, my gosh. So I want to talk about the, the things that you do besides the acting sure. and the, the coaching and all that. What motivate what motivates you to be so active in your charitable activities, ranging from lobbying on Capitol Hill? You also talk about bullying, and then you also have you also perform for uh, troops, stand up comedy for troops. What I, I have for troops, I'm I'm actually performing. Uh... Uh, this Saturday night, I'll be at the Comedy Chateau in uh, uh, Burbank, California, or Hollywood, rather. Um, yeah, I, I still do that. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I think different things satisfy a different part of my creativity and drive. Um, I haven't found one thing that sort of satisfies everything, so I do a lot of things. But you know, for me, I, I got into acting probably for all the wrong reasons. Um, when I was a kid, I was bullied a lot. And going to the movie theater was my, my safe space. It was my, my oasis. It was dark. I could hide out. And at the movies, I met my earliest mentors. I, you know, Clint Eastwood as the outlaw Josie Wales and Sylvester Stallone as Rocky Balboa and Obi-Wan Kenobi, Sir Alec Guinness, um, teaching about mindfulness. And I was mesmerized by the flickering images on this 30-foot screen and I realized the transformative communicative power that film had. And I think that planted the seeds for me wanting to be an actor, while at the same time, starting to fill my head with some good stuff to question life. And it ultimately culminated with me pursuing a career in acting. Um, like I said, I, I probably got into it for some of the wrong reasons, um, things that I thought it was all about. And once I got into it, I realized how much I truly love it. And uh, as, as time went on, I got better and better at it. And, um, you know, it's, it's an integral part of who I am as a person, but it's not who I am as a person. With the, you talk, when you spoke about the bullying, the bullying, what motivated you to start lobbying on Capitol Hill for it? Like what, what, what was the result that you wanted? Well, I, I mean, I want to bring attention to it. It's become a pandemic. Uh, right. And it's only been exacerbated with the internet and cyberbullying. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, if you got bullied, it was on the way to school and after school and at lunch. Now, with you know, the hit of one keystroke, kids are getting bullied 24-7 to 1,000 people. And unfortunately, what a lot of kids don't realize is the internet's forever. Yeah. You know, you're, you, know you, 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 you put one stupid thing on the internet and... You know, future employers see that and, mm -hmm. and, you know, you find that doors will get shut in your face and you'll never even know it happened. Mm -hmm. And it's one minute of, of 
not thinking into the future um, can have a profound effect on your life. Um, you know, teen suicide is the fourth cause, main cause of death among adolescents, and bullying is a major contributor to that. And, um, you know, it took me a very, very long time to heal from a lot of the bullying I had. Um, and I still carry the scars with me as, as an adult. And if I can do anything to help parents understand how to deal with it and help kids understand, you know, um, why it's wrong, how to avoid it, a, a whole host of things, um, then I, you know, I'm com this is something I'm committed to doing lifelong. I thank you for that. It's, I try to teach my kids that when Snapchat started, you know, you could get a, a secret account or it only stays up for 30 seconds. I, I, all just stupid things. And, it just, it irritated me. And I couldn't, I mean, I used to control my kids' phones, but then as I got older, it's like I couldn't control it anymore. So all I could do is just have the conversation of be careful what you post on there. But the one thing I've noticed over the past 10 years is how much adults get bullied. I, I always share this one story because I will never forget it. I was in a military spouse Facebook group this one mom got bullied so bad in this group that she took her life. And that just, God, that pisses me off to no end because adults should know better, you know, they like should, what? They what? Shouldn't have, and, and, you know, there's a mob mentality in <laughs> the cyber world. And I, first of all, personally, I'll never understand why on, on Facebook. I, I don't understand it. You're not going to change anyone's opinion. You are not going to persuade anyone on the internet about anything. They're looking for confirmation bias to reaffirm their viewpoints. Or they're looking for uh, a keyboard. Pick. Okay. So, I mean, and, and when you go on there and you bloviate, um, you are setting yourself up as a target. And I just simply don't see what the upside is at all. For anyone it's it's stupid it is I, I hate to use that word but it's dumb it is you know and i feel badly that that happened to that woman i really do um i i, I, can't, I just can't imagine um feeling the need to be so hurtful and vile to somebody to the point that they felt their only option was to take their own life Absolutely. And so, yes, we need to continue the conversation about bullying for children. And God, can we talk? We need to talk about the adults, too. These these people that should know better, that want to be mean, be a keyboard warrior. And it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And you should be nicer. So, yeah, I could talk about that all day. <laughs> How do you balance everything? How do you balance it all? Because you do, do all these you're with all these organizations and I, I see that you're also with the American cancer society, the boot to bullying, and then all your commitments to acting and coaching. And how do you do it all? Well, I think a big part of it is that I love what I do. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of it. Um, you know, I work, um, I get up early. Sometimes I'll start my day at five. Uh, build a couple of extra hours in before I go to work. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a uh, wonder woman wife. And, um, you know, she's my best friend, my partner in crime. Um, we work together on pretty much everything. Uh, she's a lot smarter than I am. Um, uh, but that helps a tremendous amount. And I think actually I've learned to become extremely good at time management. And I have a lot of really, really effective um, productivity strategies that I use. And I talk about them in my seminars and I talk about them in my books and they're game changers. They really are. Um, you know, once I started implementing some of these, uh, it, it just, it skyrocketed what I could do. And I learned to work smarter. I probably work harder, but I work much smarter. And, you know, it, it, and that's my process. And that leads to really terrific results for me. 
I, I love the part where you talk, you work smarter, not harder. And I have to keep reminding myself of that sometimes. I'm like, come on, Annette, seriously, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> but, but Annette, you have to understand what it means to work smarter. You can't just say work smarter. You know, that's that's just kind of an, <laughs> an empty platitude. You have to have a strategy to do it. Yes, you're right. You're right. right. That's why I have a planner and sticky work. notes, two screens, <laughs> all these right. things. Well, but, mm -hmm. I, you know, okay, I'll share one of my, my strategies, okay? <laughs> um, you guys are getting it for free, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I, I call it the 100-minute makeover. I'm a huge proponent of whiteboards. So have, a, have it pre prominently situated somewhere where you can see it, preferably up on a wall. So on Sunday, I'll write down five tasks that need to be accomplished for the week. And these not four alarm fires. They're not, I have to get my taxes done and to the mailbox by 3 p.m. tomorrow. These are things that have to get done, but you have some time to get them done. And, you know, it's amazing. I, I talk to a lot of my clients. Well, we don't start a project unless we think we can finish it. I thought that's kind of dumb. There's a lot of projects that are not meant to be finished in one sitting. So you write down five different tasks that you want to accomplish. And then using Siri, Alexa, or an egg timer, you say, give me 20 minutes on a timer and you work diligently and without interruption for 20 minutes. And when the timer goes off, it's like the SATs in high school. You drop your pen and you're done. You don't need to think about it anymore for the day unless some huge piece of new information comes in that necessitates. And what this does is it trains your brain to know that I only have to do this for 20 minutes and I don't have to finish it. And I get a reward afterwards. So when you finish the first block, you take a break, take 15 or 20 minutes, go, go for a walk, go have something to eat, go play candy crush, whatever. Okay. Paint your toenails. And then you start mm -hmm. the second one and you work through until you finish all five of your 20 minute tasks. That means in the first day you've put a hundred minutes into 20 different tasks. By the end of the week, you've put a hundred, you've put a hundred minutes into each of the 20 minute tasks. It will skyrocket your productivity. And you're looking at that whiteboard going, I didn't do that yet. I got to do it. And you know, when you know you only have to do it for 20 minutes, you can you can disappear into your little work area and say, just I need 20 minutes, knock it out, and you're done. And I don't like to look at my whiteboard and know that I haven't done all of the stuff that I need to do. And it's very, very effective. Oh my God. That you know, it, it just brings me back to when we were at work and we would have the whiteboard. And so I have to remember that whiteboard is magic. Yeah. And it, it really oh, yeah. is. And I thank you for sharing that because I really think for my little ADHD brain, I probably need that a lot. So I like the timer thing because I tend to be like, no, I got to finish this and I will work eight hours until I finish this. The, the, and, the, the problem, the problem with that is that you become myopic with one project mm -hmm. and to the exclusion of others. And most people have multiple things they need to get done in a week. That's the first thing. The second thing is that a lot of people want to take on something with focus and intention, but they've got lots of ideas ricocheting in their brain, things they need to get done. And they, they kind of will start one and then they'll lose interest and then they'll go work on the other for a little while. This disciplines you to work on multiple things for a specific amount of time and then it frees your bandwidth in your brain that I'm done. I don't have to think about that anymore. No, that's great. That's, that's really, really great. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to have, I, I got it right on there too. I have to buy your book. So that's all going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so genius. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm here to so, help. No, and you really did because this changed everything for me. So I'm going to buy a whiteboard. I have a small one, but Buy I have my a big book one. First. I'm sorry? Buy my book first. Absolutely. <laughs> so how do you see your future of your career unfolding? And what projects, if you're allowed to talk about it, or initiatives are you most excited about moving forward? Mm. Um, well, uh, my wife and I are writing the third installment of the uh, Way of the Cobra series called Cobra Couples. I'm very excited about that. We are writing a relationship book 
using the format of Wave the Cobra, but she is my she's my co sensei in this one. And um, you know, we've we've managed to keep a, a fantastic marriage together for over ten years in Hollywood. Not the easiest thing. And uh, you know, we've we've picked up a few pointers along the way. And you know, we're not experts or professionals, but we're just a, a couple of crazy kids who figured a few things out and we want to pass them on. So I'm very excited about that. It's going to come out this summer. Um, I have a big project coming out uh, in the fall. I, I can't say what it is, but right. everyone will know. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, I'm having a blast, you know, I, this is my 24th year on the Bold and the Beautiful off and, well, it's the tw it's 24th year since I started, because I've been off and on, and I am more passionate now about working on that show, which is daytime's most watched show in the world, it's in the Guinness World Book of Records. Oh my uh, gosh. I can't wait to go to work every single day, and um, I'm completely impassioned with my, my coaching clients, and they get phenomenal results. And like I said, I love everything I do. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, I, I can't, I don't need an alarm clock. I can't wait to hit the ground running when I get up. And, um, you know, it wasn't always like that. And once you find that thing that you're meant to do, um, that passion, and figure out a way to focus it and to take action, you'll never feel like you're working a day in your life. That is so great. One of the things I like to say is do what sets your soul on fire. And I'm seeing that in you. When you set, right your, now. When you set your soul on fire, the world will come and bask in your heat. You're so right. Can we get that on a shirt? Because that's so great. I'm a big believer in God. I, I truly believe that he puts us where we're supposed to be and things will come in his timing and, and all that. So I, I really love seeing the, and I wish you guys, if those that are listening, I wish you guys could see the, um, I just, I do, I see the passion. I'm not being, I'm not trying to be cheesy. I, I do see the passion coming from you right now about how much you truly love what you do. And I, and I absolutely appreciate you just being you. That's honestly, that's, that's the only guy I can be. No. And I love it. We, we need to emulate that. So many of us need to, remember that and, and see that from you. So thank you so much. Um, do you have any last words? I know I asked you a bunch of things, but I, I truly, I, I appreciate this so much. Well, you know, if anybody wants to uh, pick up my book, get them uh, on amazon.com, or if you'd like to get an uh, personalized and autograph one, you can get it at way of the And if you're interested in coaching with me privately one-on-one -on -one, or attending any of my seminars. I keep my DMs on, on Instagram, uh, X, on X, or you can go to waythecobra.com. And, you know, I, uh, I tell everybody my seminars and my coaching is a uh, uh, money back guarantee and nobody's asked yet. <laughs> That's a great thing. Right. So did you, one more time, waythecobra.com so to get an autograph book. To get an autograph book, or I have my seminars. Um, okay. uh, the new ones will be put up later this week. But I, you know, the best way to get a hold of me, just shoot me a DM on Instagram. It's uh, Sean Canon, and uh, I respond. And uh, you know, I my clients get unbelievable results. Whether it's losing weight, whether it's finding, you know, the partner that you've always wanted to find, or um, you know, changing your financial reality. And I love doing what I do. And I guess there's a little bit of a selfish motivation because it, it helps me. I mean, it's a, it winds up being a very reciprocal symbiotic thing because I get every bit as much from my clients as they get from me. And it's, it works out great. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So for those so of welcome. you that I love this and I learned so much from you, so I can't wait. For those of you that are watching, make sure to go follow him at Sean.Kanan and on Twitter at Sean and go to wayofthecover.com. I will put this all in the show notes. I just want to say one more thing. I want to thank. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank everyone for in the military and in law enforcement for your service. You guys are heroes. And I also want to thank your families too, because they play such a critical role in what you do. And there are a lot of us out here that love and respect all that you do for us. So thank you. Oh, I appreciate your words. Thank you very much. All right, guys, thank right. you so much for tuning in and I appreciate you.